Good evening. This is a quick video. This is for uh, all you people that uh, are interested in planetary live stacking, but you don't know what it'll do for you because you don't have uh, a large ap aperture telescope. You know, mine is uh, an 11-inch telescope. It's not a C14 on a mountaintop in Barbados, but it's pretty good. But uh, for other reasons, I am out here tonight with uh, a 70 millimeter refractor and uh, I've got a reducer in it so it's actually a f4.7 so that little spot right there that's Jupiter this is my ASI 183 MC this is a 20 megapixel one inch format chip so that that's Jupiter what can you do with that well first of all I'm untracked I've got a tiny little Jupiter here so what am I going to be able to do well I'm going to show you what you can do uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I am going to move Jupiter because I got my slow motion controls. You can see that Jupiter is responding, and I'm just going to put it way down here in the corner of this chip. It's barely on the chip, and it'll be relatively easy to find. Then I'm going to set my ROI to something really fantastically small on this giant chip. Let's just go 480 by 480. And I'm going to take that ROI, I'm going to drag it over, and there's Jupiter. And before I lose it, I'm going to jump right into the tool. And First of all, on the Stabilization and Alignment tab, I have Track Planet with Camera ROI turned on. And what that's going to do is it's going to track Jupiter across the chip. right? And you can see already that I've got my filtering uh, sorry, my sharpening all set up. All I've done here is I just grabbed the fine control and I just blasted it all the way to the right. And my uh, my white balance settings are pretty good on the way in. Uh, so all I don't need any color correction here. All I'm doing is just turning up the saturation a little. Jupiter looks a little small there. So let's just make it bigger. Let's just go 200%. And you can see immediately that you've got three moons. You can see colors and bands on Jupiter. By the way, it's really hard <laughs> to focus on Jupiter manually uh, at 333 millimeters, but I did a pretty good job of it, I think. And just to remind you um, what the difference is that this tool can provide, this is what it looks like unprocessed. So you can see there's Jupiter there. It's fuzzy got a hint of bands you can't really see the moons at all there you just don't even know that they're there but with the tool there they are and if we wanted to we could zoom in even closer let's go to 400 percent as always got a little ringing from sharpening I'm just gonna clip the background just like I do in my big scope and you can see even at 333 millimeters you can see features on the surface of Jupiter. You can see not just bands, but different colored bands. There are actually some uh, darker features that are visible. You can see, uh, in fact, that the pole of Jupiter here is a different color, right? It's got this slight bluish tinge to it. And this is in a 70 millimeter refractor, f4.8. 333 millimeters focal length. And if you wanted to, and it, come back here and look, here's my ROI. You can see that it's tracking Jupiter across the chip. So I've got plenty of time to watch Jupiter as it moves. And I don't need very many frames because I'm so hugely undersampled. I don't need any denoising. I don't need any fancy sharpening. I don't need to stack a thousand frames. No, I'm so undersampled that uh, 100 frames will do. In fact, let's just see what 16 frames do. So let's jump in here and go back to 400% and see what that gets us. Now you can see a little bit of rippling going on, right? You can actually see the image evolving live over time. I keep promising you <laughs> that these images are not still images, and they are not. They are updating live, and you can see you can see the seeing rippling across the planet here as we're stacking 16 frames. If we pop it back up, 
by 100, boom, Jupiter is stable. Okay, that shows you what you can do with this tool. And imagine, you know, that you didn't have a reduced 70 millimeter scope. Imagine that you had uh, a C90 or uh, a four inch scope or a five inch scope or a six inch scope. You know, you don't need a giant planet killer to get good use out of this tool. By the way, this image that you're looking at right here, I guarantee you this is just as good as a version stacked in post. <laughs> Thanks for watching.